Hi, I hope you are doing great today. I'm John Paul of the blog Pemantol.com. In this video, we'll talk about customer to bank space and interbank space in payments. What are these two spaces and why is it important to clearly distinguish them? You'll get answers to these questions and much more. Let me begin by showing you where we find these spaces in the four corner model. This is another opportunity for me to stress out how important the four corner model is in payments. If you are not familiar with the four corner model concept, I encourage you to watch the other videos I made about this topic. It is really a key concept and once you understand it, the payments world really opens up to you. On this picture, we see the customer to bank space and interbank space in the four corner model. It is self explanatory. Let's consider the customer to bank space first. The customer to bank space is the space where customers and banks exchange payment information through standardized messages in general. When information is sent from the customer to the bank, it's generally an order or an instruction. The customer may ask the bank to debit his account and credit many beneficiary accounts. That's the case for credit transfer instructions, for example. Or the customer may ask the bank to debit debtors' accounts and credit his own account, as is the case for direct debit instructions. Another option is the customer asking the bank to cancel a previously sent instruction. In any case, the customer is asking the bank to execute an order or instruction. Now, when information is sent from the bank to the customer, it is a reporting. The bank is informing the customer about the status of an order that was previously sent by the customer. The bank sent also account statements to customers another kind of reporting. It is interesting to see that customer to bank space and bank to customer space mean exactly the same thing. In practice, people usually say customer to bank space, but again, customer to bank space or bank to customer space is exactly the same thing. The messages exchanged in the customer to bank space are generally standardized, but note that bank can add specificities to take some of their customers' needs into account. The bank then provide extra services to make the customer happy, but this must be managed carefully so that running the IT platforms and upgrading them do not become too cumbersome with the time. Now, let's look at the interbank space. The interbank space, as the name suggests, is the space where banks exchange payment information. The payment information can be exchanged either directly, like between a bank and its sub-participants or indirect participants, or through a clearing system. When the bank go through a CSM, the CSM must first receive the payment message, process it, and then forward it to the receiving bank. The CSM generally requires banks to use specific message formats, in general adding specific header to standardized messages. When the banks exchange information without going through a CSM, it is generally possible to use the messages as defined in the standards, the SEPA ISO 2022 standards, for example. Here we see the four corner model for the classic SEPA credit transfer. If you are familiar with the SEPA scheme and documents, you are aware that the European Payment Council publishes two implementation guidelines document, one for the customer to bank space and one for the interbank space. In the, in the customer to bank space, you find messages that are sent from customers to banks and messages that are sent from bank to customers. That's what I was referring to previously. 
And in the interbank space, you find messages that banks exchange among themselves directly or through a clearing system like EBA Step 2, for example, for SEPA. The PAX 8 described in the interbank implementation guidelines is the ones that banks exchange among them, but it is not the one that they exchange with clearing systems. Clearing systems generally have their own specifications for the format that banks must use. And as I said before, banks are required to provide additional information in the header of messages that they send to the CSM. So we see the messages like pain one, pain two, exchange in the customer to bank space, and the PAX 8, CAM 56, PAX 4, and other type of messages exchange in the interbank spaces. I hope this clarified the things a little bit for you. And that's the end of this presentation about customer to bank space and interbank space. If you have any question, just post a comment below the video. If you find this presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also go to Prementor.com and subscribe to the newsletter to receive regular updates about articles and video. Take care and stay tuned. See you soon on the channel.